John chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto, unto him, Rabbi, we know thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen. And you receive not our witness. We'll interrupt the conversation there as we address the thought, we speak that we do know. It's always good to know what you're talking about, isn't it? We speak that we do know. Nicodemus is baffled by the entire line of conversation because these things, as we've already learned, are spiritually discerned, and he's yet to be born again. And I'll say this, there's a matter of factual knowledge and another matter of experiential knowledge. The Pharisees and the Jews at large knew the scriptures factually, but putting them into practice was often either diluted, ignored, or kind of corrupted through human tradition. So as we address this question, we speak that we do know, um, we're basically only going to answer the question, why didn't Nicodemus know? Do you know? And are you speaking what you know? Holy Father, please help as we look at these scriptures and we ask for your help and your guidance and for you to speak to our hearts and for you to draw us closer to yourself and for us to be committed, Lord, to your word, to studying it, to knowing it, to speaking it, to declaring it, and sharing it with others. We're so thankful for your goodness to us. Be our teacher. And give us your power this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Nicodemus, as a Pharisee, would have had a lot of knowledge and a lot of education. Well, he had a lot of education, but maybe not so much knowledge. In 2 Timothy 3, 7, we're told of those who are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. He asks these things, how can these things be? But it's evident by Jesus' response that he should have known these things. In his response, Jesus says, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? How is it, Nicodemus, that you don't know these things? And I don't marvel, beloved, when wicked people don't know the word of God, and when lost people don't want to obey the word of God. 
But what I find truly incredible is when people who claim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ do not know the word of God. When saved people do not heed the word of God. When born again believers question the word of God. When church members have no clue what the Word of God even says. That is what I find quite incredible. And Jesus, art thou a master of Israel? How ironic is it, beloved, that in our country, in our society, we from time to time hear Christians complaining about when the Bible was taken out of schools and and pining for the Bible to be put back into schools. But the irony is this, that the very same Christians are often wanting the Bible in schools, but they don't have it in their home. They want the Bible to be read in the classroom, but they're not reading the Bible in the living room. Are you reading the Bible in the living room? Are you opening the scriptures to your children? Are you setting aside time each day to dive into the word of God and have him speak to your heart? Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? May I take a little bit of liberty this morning and take these words and ask that question in a different way? Art thou a church leader and knowest not these things? Art thou a deacon and knowest not these things? Art thou a Sunday school teacher and knowest not these things? Art thou a Christian? Art thou a Christian and knowest not these things? Is that too direct? We should know these things. Hebrews 5.12 says, For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. You are become as such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. You know what he's saying there? I don't know if I could preach this. But he's saying, you're acting like babies. You're acting like a big baby. I'm glad he said it so I didn't have to. Well, he'd just been talking about being born again. And Peter writes, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may do what? Does anybody know? That you may grow thereby. That you may grow, 1 Peter 2, 2. He says you're acting like babies and some have still not grown by the milk that they've been bottle fed from the pulpit week in and week out. You should be eating meat, but you still need milk. Paul had this issue with the Corinthians, didn't he? 1 Corinthians 3, 1. I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Those preachers were a lot more bold back in those days. I would never get in this pulpit and say, you bunch of babies, grow up! That's what Paul said. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. Now think about this illustration. What exactly is milk? Milk, as I taught my daughter yesterday, is pre-digested meat. Or was it two days ago when we had those honking burgers? Milk is pre-digested meat. The mother eats the meat. She chews it. She digests it. Her body converts it to a form that that cute, little, adorable baby, cuter than any other baby that's ever been born because she's Pop-Up's baby, 
in a form that that baby can handle the form of milk. And that's exactly what a pastor does. He takes the meat, he chews on it, he mulls it over. He's more like a cow. He'll swallow it down and regurgitate it back up and chew on it some more and swallow it down and digest it some more and chew on it some more. And eventually, out comes the milk, pre-digested meat. But there comes a time when the baby grows, or at least the baby's supposed to grow. And the baby needs to learn to chew on things for himself or for herself. There comes a time that we need to grow up. Art thou a Christian and knowest not these things? I said, beloved, if, if all the scriptures you're getting is what you get here in this house, you're starving to death. Peter says in 2 Peter 3, 17, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're to grow up. We are to grow up and start chewing on these things for ourselves. It's with that thought that Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know. We testify that we have seen. Now, it's interesting that he uses the word we and ye when speaking to Nicodemus. Because it was only Nicodemus and Jesus in the room talking to each other. So who's the we and who's the ye? You know, of course, that ye is second person plural pronoun. Yes, you knew that. English 101. In modern English, we don't have that. But in the Bible English, when you see thee, thou, thy, thine, those are all singular. If it begins with th, it's singular. But when you see ye, your, and yours, that's plural. Jesus said to Nicodemus, ye must be born again. Plural. To whom was he speaking if he's only talking to one person? He's talking about a group of people represented by Nicodemus, specifically the Pharisees, more generally the Jews, but even more generally everyone. Ye must be born again. Who's he talking about when he says we? Those who are already born again. <laughs> Those who already know the Lord. And I find that interesting because, of course, you know, Jesus always speaks that he knows because he knows everything. So the implication is that we are being included as Christians and we are to speak that which we know. And there's a challenge and a question for us. Do you speak what you know biblically to be true? Some of you say, yes, that's why I don't say anything. Are you one who speaks what you don't know? Have you ever met one of those people who can tell you a lot about nothing? They seem to know everything, but they can't tell you anything about it. But they'll tell you how much they know about it without telling you anything about it. Sometimes preachers and Sunday school teachers are that way. Have you ever been in one of those services where you walk away wondering if the speaker knew what he was talking about? There are those who speak what they don't know. But there are those who simply don't know, and so they do not speak. I believe one reason many Christians don't share their faith. In fact, I know this to be true because I've heard this told to me before. Pastor, I don't share my faith because I'm afraid someone will ask a question the answer to which I do not know. By the way, people ask me questions all the time that I don't know. You know what I tell them? I don't know. Let me see if I can figure it out. 
hey, let's have a Bible study together and let's see if we can figure it out together. Usually the conversation ends there. <laughs> Sometimes I'll say, I don't know, I'll try to figure it out later, but one thing's for sure, before I delve into that, before you know the answer to that, you need to know the answer to this. And I give them the gospel. Wouldn't it be foolish to try to teach a child algebra before they learned their basic math facts? Well, you start with one plus one. And one plus one of the Bible is you must be born again. Until they're born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. They cannot see it. Because they haven't gotten one plus one down. Now, if you're one that does not share because you do not know, the question, the challenging question is, why don't you know? Because it seems that Jesus feels like Nicodemus ought to know. Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Why don't you know? And when he says, we speak that we know, it implies that somehow we know. How do we know? We know because we have his holy written word. That's how we know. That's how we know. And thus, in answer to the previous question, it must be that if you don't know, it's because of a neglect of God's holy word. It's really that simple. We're told in Luke chapter 1, in fact, I preached from this passage maybe last year. I know I preached from it. I think it was last year. Luke chapter 1, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, most surely believed, even as they delivered them unto us, which were from the beginning eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee, in order most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not those things? Art thou a Christian and knowest not those things? We spoke earlier about the milk and the meat of God's word. Jesus also likens God's word to another type of food. Anybody know what that is? Bread, somebody called it. Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Here's a challenging question. If we're to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, and I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because I'm afraid of what the answer would be. Have you read every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God? If the answer is no, if you cannot say, I've read this blessed old book at least one time cover to cover, with all due respect, you need to repent before God and ask him for forgiveness and promise him that this year will be the year you read that book cover to cover. It's your bread, beloved. It's your bread. It's your milk. It's your meat. Are you consuming it as frequently as your physical body consumes its food? Think about it. No wonder you're not growing. You're spiritually famished. You're spiritually emaciated. You're spiritually weak. And then you come to this house each week where a spiritual feast is laid out before you and you can't swallow it. You can't bear it. You find it hard to swallow. You can't stomach it. You find it unpalatable. And all that we can give you is milk. But even with milk, you'll not grow thereby without a steady diet. Doesn't that follow? You should see that cute baby. Did I mention she's the cutest baby that ever lived? 
You know that girl has gained 10 pounds? You know why? She gets a steady diet. How often do babies eat a day? It's frequent, right? She's had a steady diet. You know, when I was a kid, when we came home, we weren't allowed to just grab ghee dunk out of the pantry or, or snacks out of the frigimigator. You know what my mom would tell me? Don't eat that. It will spoil your appetite. Here's the thing. When I challenge people about their Bible reading, I'm often told, well, I just don't have time. My suggestion is you make time. And instead of filling your being up with junk, spiritual Twinkies and Ho-Hos and ding dongs and chips, we, get, we come home, load up on junk, we spoil our appetite for supper. Here's a challenging question. Why aren't you hungry for the things of God? Is it because you've already filled up on other things? Blessed is he who, or they, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Automatically? Is that like automatic? Does God just drop it on us? No. The implication is this. If we're hungry and if we're thirsty, the way to deal with it is to eat and drink, yes? Nothing worse than someone who will leave a church like this one and say, well, I'm not being fed. Well, you're showing up at mealtime. Are you eating? <laughs> My granddaughter, Althea, she's terrible. Uh, not terrible in that way. Her dad, he'll tell you, if I called him up here, he would tell you. I think the, I've heard him say this phrase more times than anything else he's ever said. He makes his finger like a gun like this. And he goes, eat your food. She'll sit there and play with it. She'll play with it. She'll move it around. A lot of Christians doing that. They turn the pages. You know what they're doing? They're moving their peas over, over here. And, and, oh, I don't like broccoli. Let me get away from that. Oh, here's something sweet. Let me eat that. Is this too harsh? Beloved, are you hungry? If not, why not? Maybe you've spoiled your appetite with other things. I encourage you. I beg you. Take some time each day. Make the time. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Half an hour if you can. You'd be amazed how many scriptures you'll read in one half of an hour. And we'll talk more next week exactly what to do with God's word. I almost brought a different message this morning, but I felt like I should lay this foundation first. We speak that we do know, we testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. Well, Nicodemus could not have seen. But Nicodemus was also full of the bologna sandwiches that his religion had been feeding him with. This might be offensive to some in here, and I apologize in advance, but the abbreviation of bologna sandwiches is BS. Those who have seen by faith have an assurance and know some things. And it is their responsibility to speak some things. And if you don't know those things, it's your responsibility to learn those things. And by the way, don't be surprised at the end of the day if your witness is not received. 